The question I may ask, is it their own property? Why should you loan my own property to me? You cannot loan my own property to me. You understand? They stole it quite well. Benin City is situated in the south of Nigeria. It is the capital of Edo State. Benin lies at about 320 kilometers by road east of Lagos. The population over 1.5 million. The city is known for its profound dress culture, historic structures and the Benin bronze. While Benin has developed over time, an event that took place over 100 years ago still lingers among the people. In 1896, the British planned to capture ancient Benin and replace the Oba with a native council. Concealing their plans in the guise of a treaty, Consul Phillips led the team while others hid with the weapons. However, they could not access Benin. At that time, the Oba himself was doing a festival that we call it Agwe, that fasting, fasting, Lent. It was a lengthy time. That was January. And the Oba doesn't see people at that time because he's doing Lent. And because he see it was a very uh, big and prayer uh, 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 time for the, for the nation. So the Oba said that, uh, well, they should hold on, that uh, after finishing, uh, we see them. But uh, the Philip uh, uh, group captain, but now of them, the Europeans had about, uh, uh, about 50 uh, blacks that were coming to see the Oba. But the people felt that uh, you can't see the Oba. The, 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 the soldiers now went to relay them on the side. You can't, we said you cannot see the Oba. Give us about a, about a month and you come back. They refused. The Oba wanted the British to be allowed entry to ascertain if the visit was a friendly one. But the ERSA, who was the commander-in-chief of the Benin army, kicked against it. Unknown to the Oba, he ordered the formation of a strike force to destroy the invaders at Ogoton. Phillips and his team were caught unawares and only two of his men survived the attack. This became known as the Benin Massacre. The British were infuriated and they prepared for revenge. The British people took us for a ride. They looked at us as a political people, uh, you know, a powerless people, and uh, people without a backing. That was why. Otherwise, we cannot try it in their own soil. There were about 250, uh, you know, carriers. They came to Benin without uh, further investigation. They started killing our people, destroyed our palace, and already they were interested in what we have in the palace. If what they did. This is an abomination, an aberration, forbidding thing to be released. The British left Benin with nearly 3,000 pieces of artworks, but most importantly, they left a powerful kingdom in ashes. The Benin walls were estimated to be at least four times the walls of China, but little evidence of these structures exists after destruction in the hands of the British. Benin bronzes are in museums all over the world, and the British Museum holds the largest collection. Presently in Benin, bronze casters still create these pieces of art, but what is striking is that they are sculpted on the same street where most of them were taken many years ago. Igun Street Igun is home to the workshops and stalls of several bronze casters. Many of them sell their bronzes as well as other kinds of art to generate more income. To the Benis, these pieces are beyond artistic depictions of everyday life. We were not illiterate to be writing down, otherwise our history is uh, aura. And in keeping with uh, some documentary facts about history, the bronze was uh, introduced. To the kingdom. So this is our uh, photograph, this is our camera, this is everything. So that, uh, it's well documented. Eric, one of the sculptors at Igun, has cast bronze for over 40 years. His father too was a sculptor. 
because of time. Mm -hmm. So you see, the, as the front is moving, like that's how they got so let me not build the front. In Benin, one might be interested in bronze casting, but venturing into this art goes beyond passion. Bronze casting in Benin or at the Blue Street is by bed because uh, we have uh, the Royal Charter, otherwise known as maybe Monopoly, right from uh, the upper Baobola. So the Benin was uh, built under the grid system. And the uh, bronze casting happened to be one of the guilds. So after the palace of the other Abini, the next point of call is the good street. Because you cannot mention the new city without mentioning the good street. Because of their significant their, their importance to the palace and to the buildings. Campaigners and many Bini people have made consistent calls for the return of the bronzes. Because those objects were ours with the Benins. It wasn't theirs. So I really feel bad each time I think about it. I don't think they should return it. But if need be, I think they can return it. But if they are still there, it's also a way of portraying the the artwork of the Benin's over there. I think they should return them because it's not theirs, it's ours. So I think they should return it. They don't have any use for it. We are going there to go and look at what we have. Our own property will go there to pay and also look at it. So they should bring it back to us so that they can come. Come to Edo State, Nigeria, and look at what we have. They maltreated the upper of our Verami. They even strike him of his own regalia, royal regalia. And you can see the objects looted from the palace and how they burned down the palace. Those objects were stolen away by the British, which was very bad. There are also beliefs that not returning these pieces to Benin could have spiritual consequences on the British. Well, what they looted is our property, it's our poor right. We'll be supposed to come and return it to Lord. If we don't return it, there will be ne there can never be peace wherever all those objects are. The gods of the land will continue to fight for us wherever they are. So they must return it to us. That is when that land where our objects are will continue to have peace. The Benin Dialogue Group is a collaborative team that brings together curators from countries such as Australia, Germany, the United Kingdom, and the representatives from the Royal Court of Benin. Since 2010, the group has held several meetings on ways the bronzes taken during the 1897 invasion can be returned to Nigeria. A recent meeting was held in University of Cambridge in 2017. It was inspired by the uprising that took place among the students who clamored for a return of a bronze cockerel. The piece has been in Jesus College's hall for many years. These meetings have culminated in the idea of a loan. When we say loan objects, that does not give you any impression that we in Nigeria here have waived claims to the eventual total return of our objects that are taken away. Neither have the curators in the European museums excluded the possibility of such return. But what the curators have done is to see how acting within their own point of view what they can do. Every museum all over the world, Nigeria in Nigeria too, can give out objects for loan abroad. We've done that severally even in Nigeria. The objects are taken away and we have export permit issued on them and they're taken away and brought back to Nigeria. So curators have that power to do so. Campaigners say that these objects should be returned but the British Museum are unclear about their plans. I think it's very important that we are straightforward and honest and transparent about the ways in which uh, some of these objects have entered the collection. It's absolutely not the case uh, that everything in the museum's African collections was plundered or, or looted or whatever phrase you want to use, but obviously there are certain circumstances or certain events that happen um, and, and certain um, examples like the Benin bronzes where that material wouldn't have come into the collection in, that, in the same way today. It is also uncertain if the Edo state government will accept a loan offer. 
uh, we would we would you know be open to such conversations. So there's just not one track um, decision as to whether it's going to be a loan or a permanent return. You know, we just we will be open to having a, bro a broad range of discussions on on uh, each piece of work. While the invasion and its preceding events remain a sensitive topic to the Beninese, there are some positive views about it. I recall also, as echoed by His Royal Majesty, these objects played a key role in helping to eliminate or erase stereotypes, you know, about who we are as a people. Proud to their to getting to London and getting to Europe. The belief among the Europeans was that they were living on trees. Some say the invasion enhanced the popularity of Benin and her art. For that singular, singular act, Benin has come to the limelight. Uh, we have become known all over the world because of our bronze, you know. And uh, our bronze are now found in a lot of museums all over the world. If they remain there, it will tell the world, the future generation about Benin. While the Beninese have cultural and historical ties to the bronzes, there are also concerns as to whether the government is well equipped to preserve them if returned. Obaiwa II now is trying to put up a museum where those artifacts will be kept. So it's for memory. If they are brought here, brought back here, people studying Benin artifacts or history of Benin, we go there and see it. Instead of uh, uh, traveling to London, to everywhere, to look for the, the, these things. Because they are all over the world. Every artwork has a history behind it. No matter how big or small it is, it must have a history. There is no artwork without a history. There are also anticipated economic changes. Because those who go abroad to go and view the other museums will not be forced to come to Benin to come and view the objects in our own royal museum. And you know what that means? Tourism. And with tourism, you have community empowerment and the likes. When they call them, stay in hotels. When they call them, use our cabs. When they call them, we buy our mementos and so with this. So, that again will help the economy of Nigeria. So, there are so many areas you can look at it from. One group that might be impacted the most by a return are the Igun bronze casters who still create these pieces of art despite the invasion. For them, this will be a step in the right direction. It will be a, a source of joy. It's like somebody stole your father's property. That may be that worth million. And somebody is returning back to you. Won't you step forward? You will step forward. It will rate believe very high. It, it, it will be a nice thing and it will gladden our hearts to see that, particularly the, the goons, because it was from this street those things were produced. It was our forefathers that produced them. Ancestors in captivity, as the Beninese will often say, with reference to their bronzes, have now remained in the British Museum for well over a century. These pieces were made with a lot of time and effort, and they are of great cultural and spiritual value to the Benin people. We are not sure if they will be returned or loaned, but as the dialogue continues, we will definitely find out. But one thing we are sure of, that the Beninese will not stop fighting until their bronzes are returned back home.